What's the word, y'all? Today's a big day in the NBA. Y'all probably don't even know this, but today is a huge day in the NBA because it just got more watchable. Now, the NBA product is, is amazing. I don't want you to think I'm saying otherwise, but there are some things within it that needed to be changed. And today, there was a lot of things coming out from the NBA officials that tell us the fouls are going to be a little bit different this year. And I'm, I'm excited, but a bit skeptical. I'll explain. I also didn't know there was this one piece of hair back here that's just like free flowing by himself. I don't know. So I wanted to make a video revolving around this a couple days ago. I made a tweet that said like, give me your boldest prediction of the 2021-22 season. I got a lot of great things, a lot of bad things. And I do plan on one day before the season starts going over some of those bold predictions. One guy who I could not find his tweet, it had a, a thousand replies to it. And Twitter only allows you to see so many, says something along the lines of this. Because the NBA is changing how fouls are called and drawn, Trey Young, Luka Doncic, and James Harden will be less effective this season. And that is the definition of a bold take. Now, these are three players who aren't alone, but maybe the top of the line when it comes to, to manipulating the, the refs to calling a foul, have somebody on their hip then go up, leaning into somebody that's left his feet. All of those things made the product of basketball harder to watch. I know of people, and this is an extreme case, but I know of people that don't watch NBA basketball live because they hate watching free throws and they hate the review system, which I think they changed a little bit of too. We'll get to that one day. Um, and because of that, they don't watch basketball live. They'll, they'll record it and then go back later so they can fast forward through the commercials and the free throws. And that's just not a way you want to live life, bro. And the NBA has, has put it on themselves to change some things. A couple weeks ago, they started their official, I don't remember what the name of it was. Let, let me see. Um, their annual referee preseason meeting was September 19th. And even before then, it was rumored or people knew that they were going to change the foul system, but we didn't know to what extent. Well, today they drop like five videos to tell you, hey, this is going to be a foul this year and this won't be. This is going to be a foul on the offense. This is going to be a foul on defense. And I just watched all those videos and I was like, yeah, I love it. But it's going to be extremely hard, I believe, to to really put it into play. Because say what you want about referees, they, they don't do a perfect job, but they they have a very hard job to determine something like that. Oh, did he take three steps or did he take two steps? Is that a foul in the offense or in the defense? And to add all of these extra things might make it a bit difficult, at least for the first couple months of the NBA season. Now, every single year they do this referee thing and they come up with something new that's going to improve the way the game is viewed. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't have the stats to prove this, but the first month of the season every year, from from what I remember is um, extremely foul heavy because a a lot of people are out of shape so they're not moving their they're not moving their feet they plan with their hands and the referees are trying to get used to whatever new policies are thrown into the game but that guy's bold prediction really had me thinking and I'm so happy I waited to make this video because now we actually have footage of what's considered a foul and what's not a foul but I'm gonna say that's blasphemy random person that said Trey Young is not gonna be effective um, do y'all remember when Team USA was looking for new people because Bradley Beal dropped out of the Olympics for uh, personal reasons and somebody else dropped out? Oh, Kevin Love dropped out and they were looking for people to replace these guys and they didn't even consider Trey Young. They said, hey, we want players that are in game shape already. And if you don't remember, Trey Young had just got eliminated from the playoffs, so he is in, in peak game shape. And they didn't give Trey Young a call. And I think he made a tweet like, bro, I'm, I'm sitting right here. What was the exact tweet? Because if I'm not mistaken, it was amazing. Okay, the Washington Post has... Okay, let me show you this article by the Washington Post. I don't like I don't like the way this is titled. Also, the Washington Post is one of those places that um they autoplay videos without your consent. Don't be that website. Trey Young is extremely salty over Team USA snub. I don't... I don't know if he... <laughs> I don't know if this is... Oh, but it's the New York Post. They had he had just beaten it. Anyway, um, but this is the tweet. This is the tweet. This is the tweet. This is a a grade A level tweet. Don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. Don't know what. That's went so into great. That that's process. that's that's the perfect. Uh, only thing that would make this even better, Trey. And you you got your impressions. You did your thing. We gotta crop our memes, ladies and gentlemen. You got to crop your memes. And I know you and you, you're a ball player and you probably ain't got time to crop your memes, but it don't take that much, my boy. Anyway, so he wasn't picked for the Olympics. If people are trying to figure out why, considering Team USA at that point in time had lost a couple games to like Nigeria 
and they were like, man, they need somebody that can play make. And obviously, Trey Young's one of the better playmakers in the league. And people speculated is because they didn't believe he could he can change his game enough to not try to bait those fouls. Because if you didn't know, you get to the Olympics, and it's a, it's a whole new game of basketball. There's a video on YouTube that I will not show because I I do want to make money on this. <laughs> I do want to make money on this video where there's like Kevin Love, Damian Lillard. They're trying to draw fouls in that first game against Nigeria, and the referee's like, bro, this is not the NBA. You can't do that. And people speculated Trey Young to get the call because they didn't think he can adapt. I think that's crazy. <laughs> I legit think that's crazy. Yes, him, James Harden, Luka Doncic, the list goes on and on, have manipulated the refs to a crazy amount, but that's not solely what their game is. Trey Young is still going to be a very effective NBA player, even if he can't get somebody to, to draw a foul like that. I just think it's kind of crazy to think they going to fall. What, what do you even mean by that? What do you, is, is James Harden not going to be an all-star caliber player or Luka Doncic or Trey Young not going to be as good? I don't know. But anyway, let's go over what the NBA said is a foul and is not a foul. Um, NBA officials, if you are watching this, please don't, don't take this video down or don't demonetize it. This is informational. I am teaching the people what you tried to teach people, but you ain't got that much clout. No offense. It's, it's from the NBA official. Nobody want to follow referees, bro. Let's be honest. <laughs> they don't want to follow referees on Twitter. So I, I would be the person to teach the people what, what's going on. <laughs> I just told the NBA officials that they don't got enough clout. Oh, this is, this is a great job. I have attempted to read this tweet four times now and I can't. Okay. <clears throat> For the 2021-22 NBA season, there will be an interpretive change in the officiating of a vert and ab ab abrupt abrupt or abnormal non-basketball moves for offensive players with the ball in an effort to draw fouls the following point of education videos showcase areas where the change will be needed this is great you know what actually you, did, you you actually got more likes and retweets and stuff on this than i anticipated nba official my apologies now you have to blame the nba on some of this footage looking as terrible as it is but let's talk about what they're considering a foul this play by luka Doncic where he gets the person in the air and leans into it is now an offensive foul instead of a defensive foul which i think is amazing now i can see the counterpoint for people like hey luka got his defender up in the air he should be he should be rewarded for something but come on bro leaning into him like that is now a foul and i think everybody benefits from this at least for the viewing experience they go in depth too bro they they break hey i will link this in the description because the one of the referees or whoever's in charge is actually like walking you through why it is a foul and i appreciate that um and i think you would too if you want the full grasp of these now this is an example <laughs> Why is this footage so grainy? This is an example of what would be considered a no call nowadays in 2021, 20, 2022. Size up from Chris Middleton, bink, bink. And you can see what makes this different is the defender doesn't leave their feet and they stay straight up. So now Chris Middleton leaning into a defender that's going straight up, it's just nothing. Play ball. And now what is considered a defensive foul we're about to see? And I can't even, okay, I see that the Clippers are playing. Tell me who else is on this court. Who are they going against right now? It's it's the Portland Trail Blazers. So here's the play. It's a better angle. So this is now a defensive foul. As you can see, CJ goes straight up a little. It's hard to really determine the big difference between what's the offensive foul and the defensive foul. And what I will say is the lean in is not as egregious as what Luka did. And because of that, this is a defensive foul. And again... Zubach is they saying there he's saying that Zubach is moving forward on his closeout and because of that oh now the footage gets really good <laughs> what the heck all right so here is another example of things that they are changing this move by Steph Curry where he's going against the Bucks and as you can see he's got Dante DiVincenzo I mean maybe you can't see um he's got Dante DiVincenzo on his right side he jumps into Dante and now this is an offensive foul. As you can see, the arrow's pointing towards Dante. They're like, nah, bro, that's offensive. Oh, this is crystal clear footage. Thank you. Now, this is considered a defensive foul nowadays. Now, what is different between what he just did versus what Steph Curry did? The difference is Trey Young didn't throw his body towards the defender. He just stopped. And what whoever narrating this is saying is the NBA player has the ability, has the freedom to attempt a shot whenever and change his momentum. 
and changing his momentum in this case is a complete stop and it just so happened how Neto jumps into him and that is still a defensive foul this is something that Trey Young does a lot, getting the person and, and put him in, in jail so he can still do this move. He just can't jump to the side or to the side to draw the foul. Sometimes the footage gets really good. Look at that. That's like almost crystal clear. Look at that. Why is this overhead camera better than the broadcast cam? Oh, this play is great because this is a, cru a critical moment in the play-in game. This is a critical, critical moment in the play-in game. Juan Toscano answers is going to give it up to Jordan Bell or Jordan Poole. Jesus Christ. And he kicked his leg out, and they called it a foul. And it was a lay foul. I know y'all remember this play. But now, this is a no call. Then the Grizzlies win this game. So it didn't matter at the, in the grand scheme of things. But, like, this was a very big momentum change in play. That is a no call now. And this is something we've seen before. It is it's just still a defensive foul. If you get it all up into a space and prevents him from... Um, from like coming down, it's still a defensive foul, and that is the case. Now, this is where Trey Young has to adapt his game a little bit. Again, I do believe he will be able to. But in this footage that he does the James Harden rap thing where his defender is on him, he gets the defender's arm in there, then he tries to go straight up to draw the foul. That is now an offensive foul, which I think might be the best part of this entire video because this this grind in my gears, no matter who did it, this grind in my gears all season long. I mean, yes, the NBA players are smart to see to see that there was a hole in the officiating and taking advantage of it, but now they can't do that no more. Oh, it's crystal clear footage. Here's a better here's a better look at it. Lamelo's hand is in there, and you can see the lock by Trey Young, and now that is an offensive foul. This right here is considered a no call, and this one and the Trey Young one is similar in my opinion, but something is this, like the difference. I would have to re-listen to his commentary on it but this is now a no call and again it's a classic James Harden move taking advantage of his defender trying to put his arm out to stop it he gets the contact and now that is no call and those are the major changes to the foul call and they have one more one more video basically saying that they're going to try to crack down on like the way players react to calls so you know occasionally a player get called for foul he like no what like he would do like all of this hand movement and man what is what is not anymore that's now a technical foul which I don't love too much um, just because I do believe players should be allowed to show emotion. Yeah, you probably did foul him, Carmelo. Or, no, who? No, LeBron does this a lot. P.J. Tucker ain't never fouled somebody in his whole life. Um, I think I would like for them to be able to show emotion because nobody is hurting in this situation. But now going into the 2021-2022 season, that is considered a technical foul. It's a lot of information. A lot of information coming out today. Shout out to the NBA officials. We'll see um, how good of a job they do in enforcing these things. I think there's going to be a learning curve. I don't expect the, the season opener for the, the refs to be out there knowing exactly, exactly all the calls and, and hitting 100% with it. But I do think in due time, these are better changes for the NBA. I wonder what happens to the overall free throw attempts per game for some of the top players. But overall, as an organization, because yes, we do have our top guys that do this, but everybody in the league has fished for these fouls before. It's become a part of just basketball. And they're trying to crack down on it. And I appreciate that. Now, they did release some more news about, like, the coaching challenges and things like that. I would have to dive into that a little bit more before I make a video for y'all. But I think overall, this is a W. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, you should subscribe if you don't already. There's, like, 70% of y'all that ain't subscribed. I, I know you probably see me and just assume that you are subscribed because you subscribe to one of the other eight channels. Make sure you subscribe to this one. Thank you.